Seahawks fans, wherever you may be. Welcome back for another edition of the Seahawks Playbook Podcast. Join your host, Bill Alpstead, and co-host, sports writer and football analyst, Keith Myers, as we talk Seahawks football. Seahawks fans, welcome back to another edition of the Seahawks Playbook Podcast. I'm your host, Bill Alpstead, sitting down with Keith Myers. Unfortunately, we're going to talk about a loss today. First loss of the season, Seahawks are one and one Disappointing loss at home against the Titans, but uh, we are here to talk about it and uh, work through it, figure out what happened, and get us uh, get us through the week. So, Keith, welcome in, man. Yeah, um, disappointing day, disappointing week. Um, this is a game that, that the team seemed to have in hand, um, both at halftime and then into the fourth quarter. Uh, it looked like the Seahawks had this game, and then they just let it slip away, and lots of lots of blame to go around as far as that but really it's just disappointment absolutely yeah you know it was it was crazy because i think uh, you know there was a couple times that you and i texted during the game and in the first half it was pretty pretty wonderful actually and i okay. i even mentioned the fact that i thought that the offense was explosive i mean we kind of had some explosive plays there yeah that was after the um the freddie swain uh touchdown yeah broken coverage but nonetheless you know, fun play for the Seahawks, obviously. And we were just kind of on the way to putting this team away and having another cruise control win uh, in hand. And the opposite uh, happened. And um, we need to try to kind of figure that out because it wasn't fun for anybody. Um, I was pretty much not on social media, so I have no idea how that death match worked out. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I stayed glad, off. I'm glad I, I stayed off it. social. I stayed off the social media um, for the game, and am glad because when when the wheel started to come off there at the very end, like I'm sure Twitter was a complete meltdown disaster, and I'm just you know kind of glad I avoided it this week. Yeah, it's crazy. One of those things you just uh, as you get older. That's one of the benefits of getting older is you have a little bit of wisdom, and you know, <laughs> that you're just better off avoiding that. So uh, that mess. So Seahawks lose 33-30 in overtime. Uh, we had the ball uh, on the second possession of overtime and went three and out in a really ugly series that we actually went backwards on. Um, ended up punting the ball to midfield. They ended up returning it to about the 40. And it was over at that point. Um, yeah. The writing was on the wall. All they needed to do was get about eight yards to get into almost gimme territory on the field goal, and that was it. And, um, you know, the Seahawks have never lost a, a game in which they were up 15 points um, at, at home, like 52-0 and 0 before this game. Yeah. Um, they led 24-9 to 9 at, at halftime. Um, all signs pointed towards the, the idea that we were just going to go ahead and, and put this game away, continue to roll on offense. Defense was going to do enough. But Derrick Henry happened, um, which was a little surprising because, you know, when a team's behind 24-9 to nine at half, they come out, and what do they want to do? They want to try to establish the run, which is kind of a little – different than than you know a normal team but they have derrick henry and i thought that that was actually pretty masterful by them a, a great strategy because they just methodically kind of plugged away at that score and they kept the ball out of russell wilson's hand at the same time and um so i thought it was a pretty decent strategy by them and it proved to work rather handedly um derrick henry in the first half had 2.7 yards per carry on 13 carries but in the second half, he was a completely different human being. Ended up having that 60-yard touchdown run because we failed to contain on the outside. Um, and that was one of three touchdowns in the second half uh, by Henry. You know, overall, mm -hmm. he finished um, on 35 carries, 182 yards. He also had five receptions for 55 yards, total of 237 total yards out of the 532 yards that Tennessee had overall, which was absurd. And when you take a look about uh, the total yards of uh, 532, that surpassed the total yards of any game we gave up last year uh, in that run uh, right at the beginning of the year where we were the, historically the worst defense on, on record. Mm -hmm. um, and I just don't know what to make of it. I really don't. Maybe you can help me. 
<laughs> all it, there's it's it's so weird. It's just so weird as far as all the different things that happened that that went wrong with that. It really felt like the team as a whole on both sides of the ball took their foot off the gas. And they oh, were absolutely. like, all right, yeah. we've got this. And they just, you know, took their foot off the gas and let relaxed and, and relaxed way too far and then couldn't turn it back on. Um, and I mean, the offense, what was it? Three first downs in the second half and overtime, mm-hmm. um, three straight three and outs to end the game, uh, including overtime. Um, I mean, it just was, you know, the offense did nothing. They couldn't move the ball. They couldn't protect the lead. And the defense just gave up everything. What and do you think the, was worse? What do you think was worse? The second half performance of the offense or the defense um, in this game? I thought the defense, um, honestly, because – you give up big plays. It's one thing when they you're you're forcing them to convert on third down over and over and over again. It's another thing when you you're giving up those big chunk plays, especially in the run against you know they're running the ball and stopping the run is supposed to be what the Seahawks do best defensively is stop the run and then they just couldn't stop the run. Uh, and I know it's Derrick Henry and he's big and and strong and super fast and you know. He, probably the best back in the league right now, but you still have to be able to get him down and you, you contained him in the first half. So what happened in the second half? Um, and I think the team, I don't know if they were uh, going for highlight plays instead of doing their job. Well, they certainly um, left their responsibilities, left their lanes. Containment was awful. Um, yeah. You can, you so, can look at directly at, at some of the bigger players too. I think Daryl Taylor had a bad game. I think that Jamal Adams, had a very poor game, especially in run defense. I thought he did okay defending the pass and, yeah, and, where, and getting where pressure was, and stuff. Where was Daryl Taylor? He went from being uh, the first week he was a phenomenal player who just yeah. really he was the led, lowest rated you know, player on defense according and to he Pro just, Football Focus. Yeah, he just basically wasn't out there. He didn't make any plays. He got himself out of position. It looked really ugly. Um, that big play, the sixty-nine yard touchdown. Um, I mean. I, you've got your your cornerback and your your strong safety on the back side. That their job, if they maintain their lanes, is it's to deny him a cutback yeah. lane and force him to I go think in they the got direction. Freaked out and scared. I mean, you got a two hundred and forty seven pound guy coming at you with four four five speed. Um, that's literally going to truck you, whether you make the good play or not make the good play. So you might as well try to make the good play, but they just had no hope. I mean, Derrick Henry well, is just a beast. And and yeah, I said, but, frankly, the, you know, the other day, reminded everybody what I said in the spring. It's like, he's one of the best players in the league. Probably my favorite Seahawk player or a favorite player that's not on a Seahawk roster for exactly what he showed in this game. It's just one of those deals. And yeah. I, I don't know, I mean, man. I, I mean, I'm not, even gonna, I'm not going to give it all to him because he does. If, if Jamal Adams doesn't, leave his dive lane in. and cut inside right. and, and dive to the um, yep. Yep. to the play side and leave that massive lane for oh, the cutback. It was brutal. Um, then it, now, that now, doesn't happen. Yeah, but yes. Okay, agreed. But that took a hell of a lot of vision by Derrick Henry to know that Jamal Adams was going to dive inside like that because he had that cut ready and he planted and went. I mean, I, it, he had I have that to give it's Derrick an outside Henry the credit on that. Wait, it's an it's an outside zone stretch play. You are the moment you get the ball, you're watching your guard on the play side to determine where the cutback lane oh, is. Oh, it was awful play. And when you have Adams when very you have, bad and read. Then Adams cuts in front of you there, it gives you like it's not like this Oh, it was huge. I mean, if cut- you can imagine during uh, Henry's vision on that play and watching Jamal Adams crash inside, all you see is green daylight out yeah. there on the left on the left side. All you need to do is just kind of jump over his arm handle cuz he's already being shoved to the ground. It's literally easy 15-20 yard gain right there. Mm-hmm. Um and when he builds momentum, I mean, Diggs had no chance. Flowers, no chance. It, it yeah. was just, it was awful. It, yeah, Flowers went a little, Flowers went upfield a little too far and stayed a little wide. Um, and Diggs took a kind of a bad angle and came up and then had to chase backwards rather than, you know, taking the right angle across. And the combination just meant that 
you know, it turned a 15 yard gain into a, mm-hmm. into a touchdown, but the play was created by Adams getting out of position. So I, I labeled Taylor's having the, the worst game. He did not have the worst game on, on pro football focus. I apologize. There were four other players in front of him. Cody Barton had a 27.7 grade, Jordan Brooks, 38.7, Marquise Blair, 41, Trey Flowers, 43.2. Daryl Taylor came in at 43.3. So they were all in the same same pocket. I'm not exactly sure what happened. The discipline went away. Speaking of discipline, Jordan Brooks had that out-of-bounds play where he shoved the player down. Um, Bad play by Brooks. He was clearly, you know, two, three yards out of bounds before he even really touched him. Um, Just really weird. But Pete Carroll decided right then that he was going to make a statement. Of course, Seattle's up, you know, at this point in the game. So... Statement made, Brooks is sidelined, and Cody Barton comes in, and it got worse mm-hmm. um, for Seattle on the outside edges, and Derrick Henry just continued to, to roll. What I thought was interesting is Alton Robinson, I thought, had one of the better games. I had one of the better grades on defense, um, he, 79.2 he, overall, and he's he just not have getting of- enough opportunity yeah. to be on the field. He is a guy that is explosive and he's disruptive and he does his job. And I know that the coaches want to have this rotation and they've got all these guys and they want to get them all playing time and all of that. But at some point you just have to give you the guys that are playing the best more snaps and Alton Robinson needs to be playing. He needs to be getting more snaps. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if that actually starts to happen now. They've had a couple games. Alton Robinson's been fairly steady and consistent and getting to the quarterback as well and 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 is stout enough to really kind of hold his his own on the edge. I think we'll see him a little little bit more. Maybe, you know, if it's 10 snaps or whatever extra per game, I think that it's completely warranted. He needs to be out there. I don't know whose place it's going to take. Um, Kerry Hyder's doing very well. Benson Kerry Mayo Hyder. is doing okay. But uh, but uh, Taylor, you know, they're asking him to, to play a new role this year. Well, he didn't even play a role last year, but they're asking him to kind of play that strength side linebacker. Maybe there's just too much responsibility for him right now, especially with no – I mean, he's got Bobby Wagner, but there's no other real veteran that is kind of helping him in that role. And yeah. um, it's tough. I mean, it's, it's tough and he got abused, you know, just quite frankly, um, there were some standout. I mean, when you, when you get racked like this, it's not really a complete bad game overall. There were some good individual performances. We just lost in a bad way. You never want to lose and, and take a loss like that, where you've got a game in hand and you give it away down the stretch, especially in a very tight division. You know, the NFC West, all three other teams won. There were a couple of squeakers, especially in Arizona. Minnesota drove down to the 19-yard line and leave it to their kicker once again to miss a field goal at the end to give the game back to to Arizona because they had that game in hand. Time was running off the clock. That would have been a walk-off win, and instead they go home with a loss and hand Arizona a two and zero record, so it's a it's a tough deal to go one and one in this division. Seattle's now last in the division. No, oh, it's week two. You got to have a little perspective. I know this is a <laughs> tough loss, right? It is tough, and it's hard to lose like this. And you kind of you lose faith that the team that you thought you had is going to be there or is there. And I really do believe that the team that we think that we really have is there. They just have some glaring holes here and some of it's coaching some of it's individual players taking it upon themselves to to make a play and be out of out of position they have to have a little bit more discipline Mm -hmm. and then some needless penalties i think really cost them this game and at least cost them maybe seven maybe ten points in this game this has been a problem since pete carroll joined seattle yeah well what's, what's going on with dk Metcalf? you know he seems like a pro's pro off the field and when he gets on it just seems like there's this little pouting thing going on with him and he just kind of mentally gets pulled out of the game fairly easily by a defensive back now and again and i just don't know what to make of it i think it's you know this is it's it's one of the maturing things he has to go through as a player is you know now he's the guy and teams are going to go after him. They're going to get under his skin. They're going to do everything they can to try and take him out of games mentally. And he has to learn how to deal with that. Um, 
because teams are going to continue to come at him, especially since guys have had control um, of it and they, they've, they've won in, you know, in terms of getting under his skin. So he had um, an unsportsmanlike penalty. He had uh, that both uh, holding and pass interference in the same play that destroyed a, a drive. Um, he's just, he he's struggling to keep himself where he's just focused on his job and not the guy across from him. And somebody's got to get in his ear and, and, and get him back. Um, he was the third the worst rated pro football focus player on offense this last week. I don't know about that. I'm just letting you know. I, no, I know we, I, I know I we don't put a lot of stock in those numbers. Yeah, I'm just especially saying. Especially not, especially not for wide receivers and and. But there's a lot back. of stock as well in those numbers. I mean, Dwayne Brown had an 82.3. Tyler Lockett had a 78.8. I think Tyler Lockett is just so mm-hmm. good this year and last was, year, but this year, my goodness. What did Freddie Swain have? Freddie Swain came in at 68.4 which is yeah. um, right, a, be, right below Russell Wilson at 74.5. And we'll talk about Russell Wilson a little bit too because I have yeah. no concerns. I thought Freddie, Freddie Swain had a good game. Um, well, he broke away that, on that broken play too, which really helped. But but yeah, it wasn't even just the broken play. Uh, he just had a good game. He, you uh, know who had the worst game? Um, you got it. Fuller right <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> Kyle Fuller, 63 or excuse me, 36.4. There you go. He had 63. I'm like, there's no way he was that good. 36. But you you know who was right behind him? Gerald Everett. Yeah. What happened? Like the tight ends disappeared in this game. Yeah. Well, that's, that kind of brings me back to the Russell Wilson conversation a little bit. Like what's going on? So Shane Waldron, Russell Wilson, lack of tight end use. Um, it, it almost felt like we fell back into the same pattern we had last year at, after the fifth game. Yeah, it's so where it, it, we kind of looked like that. We looked like we were churning, churn, chugging right along on offense, and then all of a sudden we couldn't seem to do anything. We couldn't convert on third down. We couldn't complete any short passes to kind of methodically work our way down the field. No, Russell Wilson's trying to take some shots. You know, even on third down and, and short, Russell Wilson's trying to get the ball out on a fade to Tyler Lockett that's 35 yards downfield. It's like, come on on yeah all we need to do is convert a little bit and get some mm-hmm. momentum and kind of and that's the yeah. way the offense is kind of designed and so when when so i i was a little frustrated i'll have to admit with russell wilson in this game because i just thought the second half it it was some of it was on him you know not not everything no but the, some the, of it was on him the blocking was terrible that didn't help the tight ends not showing up didn't help, but yeah, that specific one that you're talking about, I don't, I thought it was to DK Metcalf, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, it's it's third and two, and you're throwing a fade into coverage down the, um, you yeah, know, down the very down, low probability of completion. down the left sideline. Um, like, what are you doing? Like, wh- why why are you? I get that the the coverage dictated yeah, single that. coverage. He had single coverage. Single, single coverage um, with your best receiver. Throw the ball up in the air and let him go get it. I get all of that part, but you need two yards. Take in a game that, that's tightening. Take the easy first down. Get it. Come back to that play and yes. an, at that's, another time. That is the key right there, Keith. Come back to that play when it makes more sense. Yeah. And at, at, at some point you just have to do that. And I just look at like at the end of the, the first half when, when Wilson was dropping back and, and getting the ball out quick, but getting the ball, you know, being willing to take the underneath stuff, the shorter stuff, let the guys get out of bounds, um, you know, getting it eight yards at a chunk rather than, you know, going for the, you know, the, the, the bomb. And granted they ended up getting, um, they ended up getting you know the, a long play, but they were taking it in chunks mm-hmm. there at, at first, and it looked really smooth, and it really put the Titans on the heels, and then that disappeared in the second half. And part of it is on Wilson, part of it I think is on Waldron, and part of it is on the offensive line being bad, um, because other than um, Dwayne Brown, uh, I don't think the offensive line played well. Um, and I also think that what happened you- to Chris Carson? In the second yeah. half. Well, Chris just, Carson, what do he have? 13 carries for 30 some odd yards. Yeah. I mean, they just took him out of the game, basically. I mean, so that, okay, so you take a look at the running play, but nonetheless, 
um, we had a low per yards, you know, per carry attempt um, in this game, but we still tried to run the ball on first down eight times. We only had the possession of the ball for 22 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, we ignored the middle of the field in this game completely. If you, you take a look at all the pass attempts, um chart for for russell wilson and all the, the only entrance. play that we completed in the middle of the field was that was the deep ball yeah and then was, and then the uh the, the play that was broken none that was of it the, those were the two plays that were within the yeah, hash none, marks. none of the drag routes none of the crossing routes um so what's up with of, now that's a little bit more concerning to me than almost anything else because that's what this offense is supposed to be able to do yeah, and I, the, honestly, without the all twenty-two out because it's still not out as of the time we're recording, I haven't had a chance to go and watch it. Fair enough. I don't, I don't know what is with that, um, but I'm telling you the 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 tight ends not showing up because that's you know they need to attack that part of the field, um, and some of it is you watch what happens at the line of scrimmage. You know, Wilson comes up, he sees what's going on, he checks his and mm -hmm. and, and alters his cover, you know, his his protection and he's choosing to keep will disley in in protection and so there that there that well, will disley only had a 55 grade too so it was, that's his it, that's his know, outlet so. in the passing game and it um it and so it's um you know and, and one of the guys that's going to be over the middle of the field so they're checking out of plays that um you know, are not really out of out of. They're, they're changing the protection and they're removing guys from routes in order to protect, and it's affecting the middle of the field because it's usually a tight end, um, and so they're just not having that guy there. And I, I think that's part of it. At some point, you've got to adjust. So you're like, okay, if I've got to, if we're going to keep a tight end in on all these plays, then get your receivers coming across the middle. Get some some. Um, you got to you got to. You have to use the entire field, so they have to defend the entire field. I think that you know, and this and this is not the, the 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 best answer, the easy answer, whatever. But I don't think that we're just we're not getting enough reps on the offense. We're not converting enough third downs. I think to see some of that um, happen, you know, I think that those plays are designed. I think they're in the playbook. I think they're on the game plan. I don't think that we're literally running enough plays in order to have it completely play out the way that they'd like to do. We're not converting enough. We're, we're leaving ourselves third and long on some of these things. We're not able to run the ball effectively. Um, that's, and that's part of it is they're, they're not running the ball. Well, the only, the only big play they had in the running game was the audible to Alex Collins up the middle um, in the first half. Yeah, Everything that was a nice else, play. It was a fantastic play. Collins did a great job with that, uh, making a guy miss and, and and getting the extra yards and and got he guy. That's a guy that needs to, um, you know. Yeah, see I, the field I thought more. that we'd see a, a lot more running in this yeah. game, um, especially in the second half. Just, absolutely early, they, you know. But they didn't. Um, we saw the Titans do it, which again, hats off to them for their plan. I, you know, when you're down twenty. 324 to, to nine at halftime and you're still down what was it keith um like 30, 30 to 30 to 16 at, at with 10 12 13 minutes to go in, mm -hmm. in the game and you're still feeding the ball to your best player um that's well, yeah. that's remarkable to me well it's more than just that they were feeding that he was having success if he was you know getting stopped after two to three yards um they wouldn't have but the fact that he was grinding you know eight yards per rush in the second half or whatever it was against a team that was um, fifth in the nfl last year against the run and really good against the, the run and, and against a very good player last week it, it the whole thing is just weird because the the defensive line which was fantastic against the colts who have a good offensive line um is just, brian monet that good what do you mean Brian Monet missed the game. Yeah, um, I think that's part Pete of Carroll it. Carroll signaled, called him out, and said, "We really missed the guy." Well, they did miss him in the. I mean, he's a, a run stuffer, and yes, he's a him to Robert Kim um, uh, You know, that's a drop off because you go from a guy that is very stout against the run, and and actually has showed some great good power 
um, pushing the pocket to a guy who's undersized and supposed to win with speed, but never did. Um, I mean, it was, it was a huge drop off for, um, for the team up front. So, uh, but the defensive line went from being this big strength in the week one to being a major problem in week two. They could not generate a pass rush against a, a, a team with two backups at left tackle and left guard. They could yeah. not reliably get pressure despite two backups. So I don't know. Um, it's frustrating. So, okay. What what else did you see in this game? Like, is there anything individual performance-wise, player-wise, that you want to mention? I mean, Tyler Lockett, I, I think, really does deserve a mention mm -hmm. in this game. He's just really proving, I think, just to be the one of the more underrated players in the NFL, um, if I'm being completely honest. Um, so Tyler Lockett, what it's uh, NFL uh, leaders in receiving yards as of today, Debo Samuel has 283, Tyler Lockett 278. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just kind of one stat that I, that I can point to. Um, and he's just, he's getting behind guys. He's making guys miss. He's um, getting in the open field, really proven to be Seattle's best receiver. DK, you want DK Metcalf to be that guy. But something's going on with DK Metcalf's mental game, and I, I they need to fi figure that out right away. Yeah. So um, uh, Wilson threw a ball to uh, that was out of bounds, and it was ruled not a catch because Lockett caught it out of bounds. Uh, and it looked like he was throwing it into double coverage, and it wasn't even close. And you go back and watch the replay, and Lockett catches it, dragging both toes, and probably missed getting his toes down by about three inches at the most. Uh, and you're like, that play doesn't look like it's anywhere close. And then on replay, you're like, wow, it was really, really I missed that. close. Yeah. And, 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 you nice. know, and that's, that would have been a big play. And it's just another, it's a, it's another locket play in traffic around other people. And he's just getting it done. Um, yeah. The guy, the guy is, guy is playing really, really well. And it would be nice if someone else on the offense besides him and Dwayne Brown, um Stepped showed up, up and played well i mean oh you look at the stats and wilson had a good game right no interceptions he had the two touchdowns efficient with the his yards per attempt and and um you know completion percentage and all the things he he played pretty well but then you look at and you're like well but then why did the team only have three first downs in the second half right um that's a problem that's a major problem. Um, and at some point, the guys so got I'll ask, to I'll ask the make question better again. decisions. And what was worse, run. the defense or the offense? I still think the defense. Yeah. So why don't we wrap this up? Um, yeah. I don't want to talk about it anymore, <laughs> to be completely honest. Oh, it's you just know what? One of those... Before we completely wrap it okay. up, I do think we have to, we can't end the show without mentioning Bobby Wagner. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're the, right. Because on a day that the defense sucked and really struggled, he had a monster game. A monster game. What is it? Nineteen tackles. Twenty tackles. Seventeen. Twenty tackles. Solo. Yeah. Seventeen. So that's a team solo. record. And that's a team uh, record that he that he owned previously that he broke. He broke his. Own. I mean, the guy showed up and balled out when no one else did. And I, I, I think it, we would be remiss if we didn't mention how well he played. So anyways, now we can wrap it up. All right. So follow <laughs> Keith on Twitter at Myers NFL. I'm at NW Seahawk. The show is at Hawks Playbook on Twitter. SeahawksPlaybook.com has all the shows, everything else online. And you can follow us on your favorite podcast app and YouTube. Subscribe. Make sure that you get the, uh, the new shows um, every time we put one out. And we're putting them out at three times a week. And uh, so you want to make sure you get those next up, next show. We're going to do a pick six show um, where we talk about all the things uh, out of this game leading up into the next week uh, that we want to pull out and, and talk about and maybe go into a little bit more detail. So until next time, Keith, go Hawks. Seahawks Playbook Podcast listeners, thanks for joining us for another edition of the show. You can find us on Twitter. Bill is at NWSeahawks. Keith is at Myers NFL, and the show is at Hawks Playbook. 
You can listen and subscribe to the show at SeahawksPlaybook.com.